Our next uh, speaker will be Mr. Muhammad Nasir Jamal. He's connecting online and he's going to talk about the other part of the solar system, which is the pump. Greeting from Tunis. We are here more than 40 perhaps today, okay. listening only to you. So the floor is yours. If you could share your screen. Uh, so, uh, hello and assalamu alaikum everybody. I'm engineer Nasser from Pakistan. So we will uh, start with the glances from the previous training. In previous training, we have studied that a pump is a device which transfers. Mr. Jamal, just one, one. Yeah. Sorry, one uh, single detail. We have live interpretation, okay. and they are trying to follow you. But if okay. you could just slow okay. down okay. and phase okay. your sentences, okay. thank you. Okay. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, we need to have some glances from the previous training. And in previous training, we have studied that pump is a device which transfers fluid from one point to another. It can be horizontally, it can be vertically, or it can be the combo of both uh, vertical and horizontal. Next, we study that what is the flow rate. So flow rate is the amount of fluid flowing per unit of time. It can be cubic meter per hour, it can be liter per minute, it can be liter per second, etc. And ahead is Yes, the even slower. Okay. Please, Sorry. even slower. Uh, okay. Uh, head is the maximum height to which a pump can lift water against gravity and lift is the elevation differences or work against gravity or any external force. Friction laws are the forces or the resistance that are being offered by the valves of pipeline in which we want to carry the fluids or water and we have the formulas to calculate these friction losses. Nozzle pressure is the pressure required at the nozzle of any particular equipment like sprinkler or drip or any other equipment uh, to perform a specific job. Total dynamic head, TDH, is the total head required to do a specific job. So these are uh, three major points. Number on, uh, can you see the cursor? Yes, we can see. Okay. These are surface pump and we call it monovlog because the uh, pump, ampuller and motor, the rotor of the motor is on the same shaft. These are called submersible pump although they are centrifugal pump as well but these are called submersible pumps. This is surface pump bar shaft because we don't have any motor or any other prime mover although this is also a submersible pump. So next we have studied, we had studied la in last uh, training that what is a pump curve. Pump curve is very critical thing to understand. A typical pump curve look like that. Uh, on x-axis we have flow rate and on y-axis we have the head. And this is the curve which shows a relationship between head and flow at any particular point. So. Uh, on the extreme of the pump curve over here or on the x-axis we have maximum flow rate but zero head or pressure and on the extreme left of the pump curve over here this point we have maximum head over here but zero flow rate so this is called shut off head or zero flow rate uh, zero flow and this is called open mouth flow or zero head. What is the horsepower? Horsepower is basically the unit of power and it is roughly equals to 746 watts and it is the 33,000 foot pound per minute work done. Next we had studied that if we have a pump like that with a motor so we need to understand few more terms because uh, before we get into the details that is horsepower the actual pump the actual work done by a pump the actual work done by a pump is called horsepower and when we account for the pump efficiency we came up to pump horsepower which is normally called p2 now after that we have to select a motor which is equal to P2 and we call it a rated motor horsepower. So a rated motor horsepower and pump horsepower is something which is 
which must be equal or motor horsepower, rated motor horsepower slightly be higher than pump horsepower. Next, if we want to calculate the actual horsepower of motor, remember if we have a motor of 10 HP, 10 horsepower, this means this 10 H is the rated horsepower of the motor. It's not the actual horsepower. Where is the actual horsepower? Actual horsepower is basically the energy that motor need to deliver the rated horsepower. And it depend upon the, horse, the efficiency of motor over here. From rated P2 to motor actual input, we have to incorporate the motor efficiency. So water horsepower divided by pump efficiency will give us pump horsepower and pump horsepower must be equal to motor rated horsepower and motor rated horsepower divided by pump efficiency will uh, give us motor input or motor actual horsepower. For example, we have a system that we have, we have studied all these in the previous training but I just want to give you a refreshing. So uh, just look, this is the datum line, this red is the datum line and water is being sucked from below the datum line. So in that case, we have to add up the suction lift and the discharge. But in this case, suction must be negative, like this, minus 15. So we have to add up minus 15, minus 20, so the total head will be 35 feet. Total static head will be 35 feet. And in previous slide, we have mentioned total dynamic head. So where this total dynamic head will come from, actually if we add friction losses to static head, it will become dynamic head. Next, another situation where the system is uh, taking water or sucking water from a reservoir that is above the datum. So in that case, for example, reservoir is 15 feet above the datum and we need to carry water 20 feet above the datum. So the net head against which we need to work is only 5 feet. Here it is. Again, if we, th uh, this 5 feet will be static head. If we add friction losses to the static head, again it will become dynamic head. So now coming back to our main point. So we have a case study over here. Just a minute, please. Okay. So we have a case study. We have an site which is around 2.25 acres, which is 9104 square meter. Dimensions are 314 feet uh, length and width. It is square. And we have a water source in one of the center of the site. Available data is we need to design a drip system for vegetables where plant to plant spacing is 9 inches and row to row distance is 4 feet. And the location is Hazro, this is a small city in Pakistan. Source is solar, power source is solar and water source is underground water table so which is below water, water table depth is 200 feet and pump is submersible one. So we need to design a system and then we need to design a pump for this particular job. So here is the further detail. Line to line distance is 4 feet. Line to line, L to L is 4 feet. And plant to plant, P to P is 9 inches. And this is the borehole condition. We have a total borehole of 300 feet. We have a water column of around 100 feet in the borehole. And water table is 200 feet below the, uh, water, uh, below the ground. We need to set the pump at 263 feet are r around 63 feet within the uh, water because in this area there is a huge drawdown. Uh, the water yielding of the aquifer is not good so we have to submerge the pump to major extent to further extend as possible so that uh, we can avoid dry run of the pump. So what product we have basically used is a drip line, imported drip line from Turkish that is 16 millimeter outer dia, 0.9 millimeter wall thickness. At every 30 centimeter means every one foot, we have a dripper which is discharging at the rate of 2.2 liter per hour. And we have a PVC pipe 
we have a PVC pipe which is 2 inch class C then we are using another pipe with we are basically we are telescoping the pipe that is 1.5 inches class D and we are using submersible pump which is 10 HP as mentioned earlier three phase so here basically we are not discussing the design of drip irrigation we are basically we just want to go back immediately to the pump section that, that's why uh, I'm, I'm not getting into the details of drip irrigation design so uh, this is the site we have divided the site in four zones every zone have 12,325 liter per hour flow rate and here you can see it we main line is UPVC 2 inches sub main is 2 and 1.5 inch laterals are north south uh, here is the south uh, north direction and this row this blue uh, arrow is showing the direction of laterals and nozzle pressure required for drip irrigation is one bar which is around 10 meter okay now we need to do the friction losses when we have to calculate the friction losses in order to determine the tdh or in order to determine the total dynamic head we need to look for friction losses and we call it worst case scenario so what is worst case scenario it is that the point which is far remote from the water source or from the pumping unit and also the point which has a high flow so if we are getting a zone which is remote from the pump and at the same time this zone or this area has the highest flow so we will straight forward select that zone but in case we have a remote point but the flow rate of that remote point is slightly less than or even highly less than any other flow and we have another zone which is not remote from the pump which is near to the pump but it has a high flow so in that case we need to calculate the friction losses for both, both the zones both the areas and then we need to select the one which has a higher friction losses so here uh, as all flow rates are equal so we are selecting zone 2 for this purpose which is obviously for far away from z4 or z3 we can either choose z2 or z1 it will never make any difference let's see from the z uh, let's uh, go for the z2 zone 2 in main line length is 157 feet which is around 48 meter and flow is 12325 then sub main is you see this brown color is for 2 inches and <coughs> blue is for uh, 1.5 inches same flow then sub main again 7500 flow how we have calculated this flow this is a part of drip irrigation design system which is not the scope of today's training so and lateral we have a lateral uh, here which length maximum length is 157 feet and nozzle pressure is 10 bar now we you we need to use the excel sheet that we have already provided to you uh, hopefully uh, in the last training hopefully you might have that uh, um, uh, excel sheet so with the help of that sheet we will calculate that in 2 inches losses are 2.18 meter in sub main losses are 0.92 meter but here the pipe is not a blind one it has it is a perforated pipe it has the outlets every four feet so here we have to use the outlet factor which uh, we for which we have the formulas how to calculate uh, so uh, jo, uh, the the final uh, harsh, uh, the final friction losses for sub main will be uh, 0.35 meters and similarly for 1.5 uh, inches the final friction loss is only 0.5 meter and in the lateral we have 0.61 meter so now we need to uh, add up all these three or four friction losses which came up to 3.64 meter these are the friction losses in the piping network next these mr mr jamal uh, yeah. sorry we have minus one minute left so oh, okay. if we could just okay okay yeah 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 we'll just thank you so now minor losses are basically 20 percent of the major losses and we have a major loss of 3.64 meter so 20 percent of that is 0.73 meter now add these minor and major losses which is 4.4 meter now add up the uh, nozzle pressure losses in this filter etc so the final is 97 meter now uh, 
our duty point is 97 meter head and 205.5 liter per minute now straightly come up to the group performance and draw these two lines horizontal and vertically you will come to know that you have to select kps 6 or 10 pump you might have some different pumps in your region this is the pumps which are available in pakistan so straightly jump to that point draw a vertical line at 205 lpm and a horizontal line in 97 meter so it will cross here so the duty point is this one now we have between the two curves number one is kps 10 over 13 another is kps 10 over 11 you, we cannot select kps 10 over 11 we have to have we have to select kps 13 uh, 10 over 13 because it's higher point and then draw a vertical line below and here is the power curve from this power curve we will get this and that's how we will calculate our required horsepower at 7.5 horsepower so we need and from here you can calculate the efficiency of that pump at this particular flow rate which is 66 percent now that is the last slide please allow me so uh, water horsepower is 4.4 meter and pump horsepower is 6.71 meter as uh, horsepower so pump efficiency is 66 meter and we have to have a motor which is at least 7.5 horsepower so but as i told you earlier that we have selected a motor of 10 horsepower because we need to we need to cover that entire curve this curve so for this curve we have this and at this point this is the maximum horsepower required for this particular pump and from this if we calculate using the formulas it will come up to eight uh, horsepower so in market we don't have any eight horsepower pump motor so we have to jump up to 10 horsepower so we uh, as a rule of thumb please remember do remember it that we need to curve the entire curve the entire curve for for this particular job we need 7.5 horsepower but to cover the entire curve we need 8 horsepower otherwise the the motor can can be burned electrically so as there is no 8 horsepower motor available in the market so we have to jump up to 10 horsepower so that's all from me thank you very much thank you very much mr Jamal. please stay with us because sure. we will have a discussion i'm pretty sure that uh, sure. we will have many questions regarding your presentation.